keyboards, and they send full words. There's no longer, you know, you know, T H N X is thanks or you know, T H X or you know that, that kind of, those kind of thing. Although I said that I just got a text from my daughter from girls camp, and it was, it was easy to read. I could read it. So if you don't know how to text message, get a phone that does. Have go to mutuals one night and say, could you teach me how to text message? And I, I guarantee you, most of our youth know and do it all the time, and we'd be more than happy to teach you how to do it and how to make your phone do it if your phone is not capable. If your phone is not capable of doing what, I suggest you get a new phone. Also, are powered by the electrical system, and they work on the same phone system that the rest of the phone systems work. And so, nope, they probably will not work. Neither will your wireless. Your wireless DSL that you may have at home, because that goes through the phone system. If you have, uh, what is it, Vonage or any of those, as soon as your internet goes out, there goes your phone. So if you've canceled your home phone system because you're going with Vonage or something else, you're really going to be in trouble because then you don't have any home fo phone service either if it, if it were to work. So, these, you know, uh, the, more, the more cool gadgets and toys and ease we make our lives, the more we're caught in a spidery web of being reliant on other things. So no, generally phone system, email phone systems won't work. Now the good news is with, I mean with uh, fax systems, the good news with fax systems is because they are usually not always, especially in businesses, they are on a separate line, separate trunk line from a standard business line. And so sometimes if your standard business phone is not working, like the PBX requires power or something like that and, the, and that, and that system's not working, the fax machine might be the only machine that's worked. So if you work in an office and the phones are down, go check your fax machine, see if it work, is working. Most of them have a phone attached to them, some of them don't, but you might be able to see if it's working during, during some kind of power outage or problem. Um, Another option is that the, fact the cells might work though. Actually, that might be one of the saving graces, cells might. Cells are probably, it depends on, on everything else, but cells are probably the last ones to work. But it also depends on what carriers. Um, I used to work for at and Wireless, it's one of the reasons why I know how all, all this wireless stuff works. And all of their systems have, in fact, if you go look at a wireless cell site, and there's a little building next to it, that little building has backup generator power in it. Those were, those were spent for AT&T. Now the problem is a lot of the new stuff that they have is don't, doesn't, have, doesn't have that. Some of the, the digital things they don't have, don't have the power backup because they're not, they're trying to build so many cell sites and trying to keep the cost down. So some of them, some of the newer ones don't. So it depends a lot on, on the carrier. And which carriers do and which carriers don't, I don't have any idea anymore. Um, so it, it might be that, that you know, uh, Sprint, AT&T, and, uh, and Verizon are working, and uh, and others aren't, or vice versa at, at all. I do know that during the Northridge earthquake, that AT&T was the only wireless service that worked after the Northridge earthquake in the Northridge area. It was the only one that worked. Now, if that's been fixed, repaired, changed since then, I mean, that was a long time ago, I don't know, but I know that then that was the only, AT&T was the only one that worked. Um, so, if you can't use your phone and you can't use smoke signals, or you can, but you know who's, who's going to know what it means? Oh, look, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> if you don't know how to use Morse code, you know flashing signals and all that kind of stuff. What are we left with? Well, we we have a great technology now that is available to us. You have other kinds of radios that are not cellular radios, that are not your cell phone, but we have those little ones that you buy from, you know, Walmart or wherever. You know, I sell them. They're a little FRS or GMRS, the family radio system. The little handheld radios that say they'll, they'll work for two or three miles. They say they'll work for two or three miles. They work for about a quarter of a mile. That's two or three miles, line of sight, nothing in the way, perfect, you know, the wind's not blowing on them. I have ones that I was really hopeful because they were GMRS radios. They were supposed to go 16 miles. I was really hopeful of that. And so I bought some for me and a bunch of my friends. If, if, even if you have these radios, you can only communicate a mile, let's say, you know, half a mile to a mile with these things. You, that still has an advantage. Well, you might say, well, what advantage is a radio that only goes for a mile? Well, 
in the city of, uh, of uh, Washington, D.C., and other cities like it, they're starting what they call FRS, or GMRS, cell um, pods, I think is what they're calling them. And that is one month, one, one day a month, everybody gets that little radio out, they all turn it on the same channel, and they see how far they can transmit a message. Kind of like, remember when you were a kid, you played the, 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 uh, the game telephone, you know, she tells you, he tells her, he tells her, and tells, you know, right? You get the message from one side or the other. Well, with a group of these little phones, that's what you could do. You may not be able to talk from one side of the state to the other, but if I had one, and there was somebody over there that had one, and we could chain link it down. We did that at uh, one of the uh, youth conferences using those GMRS radios, and I was at one end, and Kim Nina was at the other end, and we couldn't talk to each other. But there was somebody in the middle, who usually happened to be Brad Smith, was in the middle. And so I would relay a message to him, and he would give it to her, and she would give it to him, and he would give it to me. Now, that's not the most efficient way to communicate, but it beat the heck out of me getting my car, and driving three miles down the road to talk to her. And so it was able, we were able to communicate back and forth that way and communicate messages. That's not a great way of doing it. The other thing you can do is go up, up, up one step up and, and go back to the 70s, put on your old trucker hat and pick out that light and say, hello, good buddy, buy yourself a CB. Get yourself a CB ready, I'll put a red on top of your house, and it's about five miles or so. Those work. I happen to have one of those, a couple of them. They work great. The problem is there's a bunch of five individuals <laughs> who are on the CB radio. So if you're, oh, let's see if this thing works. Oh, let's not do that anymore. Uh, they're really great, but they don't communicate. They only communicate in a limited amount of space, uh, and you're limited to the 40 channels. And there are a lot of other people out there using them, so it works and is a tool, but it's not a great tool for emergency communications. So, what if you really want to reach out and touch somebody? What do you do? What do we do if you're going to touch? We want to talk to not just here, but we want to talk to somebody a long distance away. Well, we have one of those communications. It's what we use in our stake and what the church uses, and that's amateur radio, otherwise known as ham radio. And tonight I have invited uh, Rich Olson to come because he knows far more about ham radio than I did. In fact, I asked him a question that somebody asked me, and I'm, I'm hoping... He, did you find an answer to the question? Are you going to talk about that? I think. Which one was it? About what does ham mean? I, I, I researched that. Did you really good? Because he, he asked me, what, what do you want me to talk about? And I said, I had somebody ask me what ham radio meant. I had no clue. That's one of the few questions I get asked that I don't know the answer to, or at least come up with a darn good estimation. So I want to turn some time over to Rich. He's going to talk to you about ham radio and amateur radio and, and, uh, and its history and aspects. Well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to visit with you this evening and share with you some things about amateur radio. And I will get to the, uh, um, the answer to that question and some other things here. A little bit about the history of, of, radio, of amateur radio. When you talk about amateur radio, you have to talk about radio in general. Ham nerds tend to be tinkerers. And they were typically engineers. We love them. They get us to the moon and back. And they see something and they can always make it better. And that's essentially what the early hams did as uh, radio started to emerge, and this is back in the 1890s, 1894 to 99, uh, Marconi did some very interesting experiments over in Europe and, and found that he could send a, he could create a big spark and it would send a signal that was receivable. And they were all excited because uh, first it went a couple miles, then it went 25 miles. And anyway, they created a, a, a radio out of this and it took a huge amount 